Hi, um, my name is Maggie Gallagher, and I just want to let you know how great it is to be able to speak with you here today at this extremely important uh, conference. I wish I could be with you in person. I want to start by thanking the Universidad de la Sabana and the Universidad uh, del Rosario uh, for the invitation and for putting on this conference. And you, distinguished guests, scholars, public intellectuals, congressmen, and other public servants, and uh, everyone here who cares about the future of marriage, the future of the family, the future of your uh, community and your country, and uh, especially the future of religious liberty around the world. Um, because all of these values are intimately bound up in the gay marriage debate. Now, I know that was a kind introduction. Um, if I am asked, who am I? I say that, well, I'm really, I'm a writer. Um, I have not earned my honorary doctorate with which I'm sometimes conferred for my uh, writings on marriage. But I, um, and I work right now for the American Principles Project here in Washington, D.C. Um, my career divides neatly into two parts. I, right after I graduated from Yale, I became an unwed mother. So I became interested in a personal way with reflecting on what were considered the inviolable truths of the first sexual revolution, which is if you're, you're happy as a mother, your children will be happy. Marriage is really irrelevant to child's well-being. It's hard to believe it, but at least in the United States, people put on their scientific white jackets and asserted that. And so I became involved in the social science and public uh, uh, debate about whether and how fathers matter, whether and how marriage matters uh, to the children themselves, to the men and women who do it, and also to the community, the taxpayers, uh, and other children even in the neighborhood. And then around the year 2002, the debate shifted and became uh, a question. I didn't choose this debate. But the question was being made increasingly that, in fact, family structure doesn't matter. Stability might matter. Neither fathers nor mothers matter for children. What really matters is equality. And so I spent about uh, 12 years or so uh, becoming a leading figure in the gay marriage fight here in the United States. And I want to uh, share with you what I learned and what we here in the United States have learned about what the gay marriage debate really is and what it's about. Because gay marriage advocates say a lot of things, and I believe they mean them. That love wins, that this is about being nice to gay people, it's not going to affect you. I think there's, you know, here in this country, thousands and if not hundreds of thousands of well-meaning gay people who are more concerned about the effect of gay marriage on their life. But what the left here uh, has a different vision for what gay marriage means. Um, I was asked by my co-author, I did a book, uh, same -sex, Debating Same-Sex Marriage, with a uh, Wayne State University law philosopher named John Corvino, and he invited me, which was published by Oxford University Press, and he invited me to speak to his philosophy class. And the first question he asked was, well, now that we have gay marriage in some states, what, how do you think it's going? And I know, because I know the more conservative gay marriage advocates really believe that, sure, there's a lot of fuss and hoopla before you integrate gays into any existing institution, but afterwards, it, it hardly matters. And I, I had to tell him that I was, even at that stage, which was a number of years ago, shocked by how quickly my worst fears about what gay marriage might mean um, from having been in and arguing about what the core moral principles involved are uh, and what was unfolding. So what does What's the heart of the argument for gay marriage? The heart of the argument for gay marriage is there is no morally significant difference between same-sex and opposite-sex couples with regard to marriage. And corollary number two, if there's no difference with regard to marriage, there really can't be any difference anywhere. There's no reason. They're same-sex and opposite-sex couples are just the same. They're equally situated. And um, therefore, uh, there is, if you see a difference, if you think there's something special about unions of husbands and wives, there's something wrong with you. You're like a bigot. You're like a hater. 
you're irrational, and your views need to be repressed in the name of inclusion. So this dynamic of exclusion of uh, gay marriage dissenters and traditional religious views and institutions in the name of some strange Orwellian version of inclusion is the fundamental dynamic that we've seen gay marriage uh, unleash in the United States. The Christian adoption agencies were one of the earliest uh, to be excluded. Catholic Charities in Massachusetts, um, Evangelical Lutheran Services in Illinois, uh, as soon as gay marriage becomes the law of the land, suddenly it becomes unacceptable for, for the state to work with longtime religious partners who have helped the most vulnerable children uh, find good homes. And that's an extraordinary warning signal because, well, let me put it this way. In, in the state of Illinois, which passed a gay marriage bill before the Supreme Court, imposed it on all 50 states in 2014 here in the United States. Uh, the gay marriage advocates were promising that it wouldn't affect, there was no need for exemptions to protect Catholic charities or evangelical Lutheran Char children's services. It wouldn't affect them at all. It wouldn't change existing law. But immediately afterwards, um, gay couples who had been turned down for adoptions and against, by these eight particular agencies, it's. Uh, went to the Human Rights Commission, alleged a discrimination, and um, these uh, agencies were in fact told that they either must personally do gay married adoptions on an equal basis with other married adoptions, or they could not uh, do, they, not only could they not receive funding, but the government would not work with them to find, uh, when they were seeking to find homes for these needy children. and. I was really struck by this because the argument that was made was that uh, it, you know a gay person in Illinois imagine their dignitary harm, their their shock, their sense of being oppressed to find that government was willing to work with a discriminatory adoption agency, and uh, they they their their feelings would be so hurt that it was necessary to drive these, you know, to exclude these Christian uh, adoption agencies. And the, uh, uh, the extraordinary thing is that that dynamic is never reversed. There's many, many more Catholics in the state of Illinois than there are gay people. But the fact that a young Catholic person would discovering that their government is unwilling to work with Catholic charities or an evangelical uh, adoption agency uh, what that says, the message it sends of exclusion to traditional religious communities and gay marriage dissenters doesn't matter at all, right? Um, but it's not just these adoption agencies. We're finding now that whole professions are being systematically closed to gay marriage dissenters and therefore to members of traditional religious communities if they are known to oppose gay marriage. Um, corporations, for example, uh, the most public example of this was uh, Brendan Eich, who um, I call him the Mozart of Mozilla, um, high-tech innovator extraordinaire. And his only crime was to have given $500, I, I believe he is a, a member of the Mormon Church, and at the request of the church he gave $500 to Prop 8 in California. Prop 8 said only marriage is the union of one man and one woman. It said nothing else about gay people and it retained 100% of the legal benefits through civil unions in the state of California. But that act of having donated to Prop 8, a tiny amount for a man that wealthy, uh, caused a public uproar, demands that he either recant his views or he must step down because you cannot be the head of an inclusive community if you are a traditional marriage believer. And he was in fact uh, eventually decided for the good of the company that due to this public pressure he had to step down. Now, Brendan Ike is a rich man. I'm sure he's fine and doing interesting things, and it's Mozilla's loss that they don't have his talents. Um, but I can tell you many other examples where people are losing their jobs or have threats to their jobs because they did something in a democratic society like writing a letter to the editor opposing gay marriage during the debate on gay marriage in New York State or posting things on the Internet or so the message is being sent out that if you are known or you know 
take the California beauty queen who when asked the question said she didn't believe in opposite, opposite marriage. And uh, that was enough for the entire gay community to say it's unacceptable for you to be a beauty queen or to be a hairdresser, I can tell you in one case, or to be a public school teacher, or even in one case to be a Catholic school teacher uh, if you hold these views. Um, one of the more recent examples, uh, extending from the private sector, which might arguably be free to do what it wants, uh, the Atlanta Fire Chief, Chief Kelvin Cochran, who's an amazing American success story. He is a black man from Louisiana, the poor son of a poor single mother, one of, I think, six kids. And when he was five, there was a fire in the neighborhood and the fire trucks came roaring in with their lights blazing. And he said to himself, I'm gonna be a fire chief when I grow up. And darned if he didn't. And he rose to become an excellent fire chief of Atlanta, Georgia, a major city in the United States. He was fired. What was his crime? His crime, he's a, a, a Baptist or some other form of Protestant Christian. Uh, he wrote a booklet, uh, pub self-published, about designed primarily for his own Bible study and also for others then uh, on Christian teachings. It included literally, literally one paragraph where homosexuality was included in a list of sins against purity, homosexual conduct, that uh, the Bible forbids which is certainly true. Um, and for that, he was considered unacceptable to help save people from fires in the city of Atlanta. The argument is made that employees can't be comfortable working around somebody who they know doesn't agree with them on gay marriage. And I have even heard it said, I actually know the case of a volunteer in Massachusetts, a volunteer fireman who was let go because of an unpaid position because the city council decided he could not be trusted to save gay people from burning fires because he didn't believe in gay marriage. That's how intense the effort to establish a new moral orthodoxy is. The legal profession, extremely concerning. Let me tell you a story, a couple of, again, within months of the state of Washington in the West Coast uh, passing a gay marriage uh, referendum, this is what happened. A state and judge was asked in chambers by an employee privately, there was a group of people in his chambers, would he personally perform gay weddings? Because judges are allowed to do that but not required to do so under uh, law here in the United States. And he said, no, I don't think so. And the employee said, well, why not? And he said, oh, religious, religious reasons. He was a Catholic. And that was enough, the employee took it to the press, there was a public furor, it led to a, an ethics investigation, and as the price of keeping his job, this judge signed a consent agreement acknowledging that being known to refuse to perform gay weddings is a judicial ethics violation. These, these um, battles are being repeated in other states. The ABA is now passing new ethics, the American Bar Association, new ethics regulations that many religious people are going to be used in a systematic way to exclude, in the name of inclusion, people with diverse views on marriage. Um, we have the wedding professionals, another early sign, bakers, florists, sometimes people who host weddings for money on their family farms. They have a barn, they make it over and they use it for weddings. Um, these people are being systematically losing their family livelihoods unless they're will being willing to perform gay weddings. And I find it extraordinary because, you know, as with the adoption agencies, the question is who really benefits? Who really benefits? Like, why can't, this is really small, big corporations, or this is not like Jim Crow's America where powerful segments of white society were trying to keep the black men down, you know? Uh, Melissa, Melissa's bakery is just trying to live her life in accordance to her values and the new liberal moral left, left wing, I don't think it's liberal, moral orthodoxy says, no, 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 you must submit or you are going to exclude you from a whole range. In the United States, at least, the good news is we don't throw racists in jail, so I don't expect that that's gonna happen. But the power of law and government, as well as public pressure, is being used to exclude and marginalize uh, gay marriage dissenters and therefore every traditional religious community. Um, 
The final thing, well, I could go on and on, but let me just add another thing that people are quite shocked about. The Obama administration, again, within six months of gay marriage ruling in the Supreme Court, has put in place, uh, put in place the legal framework everywhere in law that the federal law forbids gender discrimination. He has now decided, and his Justice Department has now decided, without any color of law at all, that this includes gay, lesbian, and transgender discrimination. And uh, therefore, rather than having to negotiate for these protections and include religious liberty discriminations, they are now using the power of the federal government to begin the process of punishing and excluding gay marriage dissenters and people who, have to, who, who um, disagree that it's possible to change your gender. And it's reached this point, this quickly, this badly, you would think I'm making this up, but the, the President of the United States is now threatening every public school in America with the loss of federal funding, which is about 10 to 20% of most schools funding across the country, unless they let biological males shower on an equal basis with girls, if that biological male feels that he's female. It's not just bathrooms. It showers. It's in every way. If you think you're a woman, there you don't even need a doctor to certify that you're transgender. You have the right to do it. And this is also happening in corporations in women's changing areas. Um, and the problem, of course, is that uh, although it could be that the gay community intends this to be only applied to the small number of uh, people with genuine gender identity disorders. It, in fact, authorizes any man who feels like he wants to use the women's facilities to do so. There was a case recently in the state of Washington where a, a man went into a public swimming pool, into the women's locker room, changed in front of everybody, and uh, when the women complained and the, the uh, owners of the, the people who run the managers were brought in, uh, he said, uh, he was. He said, "Well, the state of law, the state of law of the state of Washington now permits me to do this." And he changed back, and he went home. Didn't seem to ever come back. I don't know. It was making a statement of some kind. But that's how absurd things have gotten, and also how really powerful this new moral orthodoxy is. So, why is this happening? Gay marriage is not about letting a small number of people kind of join an existing institution. It's about overthrowing a basic moral norm of society. What, what is marriage? As a human universal throughout time and history, marriage has been many different things, but it's always been the way the whole society conspires to bring together male and female to make and raise the next generation together. And that, uh, the, there aren't many human universals. Clearly there's a need, we know, that human sexuality left unorganized creates a lot of victims and can create chaos and damage for everyone. Gay marriage is based on the opposite principle, that there is nothing distinctive about men and women, husbands and wives, mothers and fathers for children in our society. And the gay marriage question, one of the reasons the consequences are so cascading after you submit to gay marriage, is that you've cut up from, if you're not willing to fight for marriage, then where are you going to fight this moral norm? So on the one hand, they tell you it won't affect you, but once it's in place, you have now established within your law and your society this new sexual orthodoxy. So the, the second reason it's happening is that in doing so, uh, a friend of mine once, and I don't remember the name of the philosopher, but introduced to me the idea that every society has a hierarchy of suffering. Right? If someone, we prefer no one has to suffer, but parents suffer rather than children suffering. Um, we, as Catholics at least, try to have a preferential option for the poor to prefer their suffering if somebody has to suffer. Um, but it is true that we can't pay attention to everybody all at the same time. So, one of the things the gay marriage question is about is in the middle of the crisis of marriage that we're all having because we're not doing well and marriage is not functioning well in its core, What's, whose suffering is the most important? And what we are deciding communally through the gay marriage debate is that the suffering of gay people and transgender people in being excluded 
from this norm that we need to bring together male and female to make and raise the next generation, that their suffering trumps most others. Um, and that's another reason why these consequences. So the first sexual revolution was about license or liberty, if you're in favor of it. It's like, we should be allowed to do whatever we want and nobody should interfere. You do what you want, we're gonna do what we want. And I think there was a problem with that as a moral principle. But the thing I wanna point out here is this, the second sexual revolution that we're now facing around the globe is about something else. It's about a moral principle of equality, which the whole society is expected to believe in. And uh, equality trumps religious liberty. And that's why I would say first in our own hearts and in our own minds, we have to understand the, the intellectual and the spiritual battle in which we are in, um, which is that we are being asked first by powerful influences in society and then by our own government to accept things that we think are really untrue and some cases are obviously untrue. Two men may be able to love each other, but they cannot fulfill the function, functions of marriage. Um, a person with gender di identity disorder needs to be treated with sympathy and compassion. But it is not true that every girl in a public high school has to get used to showering with people with male equipment uh, as a principle of equality. Um, and uh, we have to somehow sustain our own sense of ourselves as uh, loving people while acknowledging, because you can't help it, the barrage of hatred that is directed at you for the simple refusal to accept that there's nothing special about unions of husbands and wife, that society has no distinctive interests in creating and sustaining marriage understood in this, and that same-sex marriage is not a simple add-on, it's a fundable, fundamental revision of the basic moral norms of society such that the suffering of children in the many homes uh, caused not by gay people, but by those of us who are attracted to the opposite sex becomes less important than imposing this new norm of equality on the entire society. So I now thank you again. And um, uh, I wish I could be there to take your questions, but I salute your courage and do not fear Ideas that are based on untruths about human nature cannot last. I was told as a young woman that many things were inevitable. I was told that there would be no women home raising children. I was told that the Soviet Union was the future of humanity. And within a few years that communism had crumbled as an idea. Things that are based on untruths about human nature take a lot of energy to sustain and promote, which is one of the reasons suppressing alternative views becomes so important but fundamentally they will fail. Thank you for listening to me, uh, whether you agree or disagree, and thank you again uh, for caring about the future of marriage and the family.